Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this week's media teleconference. This is Ross Foreman with Impact Wrestling. It gives me great privilege this week to welcome the world champion, Austin Aries. Welcome back to Impact Wrestling, and welcome to the media teleconference. What's going on, everybody? Thanks, Ross. Austin, how's it going for you? And, and obviously, welcome back, and uh, bring us up to speed. How are you doing? I'm doing really good, man. Just got back from Peru. Uh, getting myself ready for an uh, event here tonight. Uh, debuting for MLW here in Orlando, just down the road from myself. So things are good. Staying busy. All righty. Well, uh, quickly, as long as you, you bring it up, uh, what were you doing in Peru? Talk about that. That had been an interesting trip. Yeah, it was great. Uh, Imperial Lucha Libre, uh, about you know, 2,000 fans that were uh, just bringing a lot of energy and excitement. Uh, was a you know really uh, stacked card. Uh, the guys all went out there and, and really uh, blew the roof off the place. I had the pleasure of getting in there with uh, the villain Marty Skrull, and uh, we uh, we had a lot of fun. One uh, one umbrella, two bananas, and uh, four four belts. All righty. Well, I, I got to ask you, and I'm sure everybody else is going to be wondering, how do you come in and perhaps in record time claim the world championship? From Eli Drake. Uh, you know, honestly, I was uh, I, I was probably as shocked as, as, as everybody else was. Um, you know, uh, again, I, I put a tweet out uh, yesterday. Just you know, sometimes one miscalculation, uh, a, a, a combo of a couple of lethal moves, and uh, you know, the old dress shoes drop kick, caught him right in the old face, brain buster, which uh, has been one of my trusty finishers for almost all of my career and uh and, and there you have it so uh i'm sure uh i'm sure eli's regretting his decision to uh to uh, make the match as he did and i'm sure he'll want to rematch and i'm uh, more than happy to oblige all righty well we have a, a full house of media waiting to talk to you austin so media we're going to uh open it up at this time again it's star six to Get in queue for a uh, question. Again, as, as always, I ask you to identify yourself, identify your media outlet, and please limit it to one question at a time so we can uh, get as many questions to Austin as time permits. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. If you'd like to ask a question, your input is invalid. If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. Hey Austin, this is Graham Matthews with HitRemote.com. I uh, just wanted to know, when did you first entertain the idea of returning to Impact? Uh, we, uh, we had some uh, initial discussions uh, shortly after uh, you know, I was a free agent uh, really before the new team was put into place. I had a conversation with, with uh, Sanjay, and, you know, we, we were just kind of talking about some different things. And at the time, I wasn't really interested in coming in uh, as talent. I was more interested in possibly just coming in as part of the team to kind of help write the ship, if anything, um, and just realized at that point that that probably wasn't a fit, uh, you know, for me. Um, you know, and then I think, you know, it really wasn't until – Man, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember when it was. Uh, you know, maybe late December. I mean, when I when I you know talk now when they had the team in place, I got to kind of hear the philosophy of, of what they wanted to try to do to try to turn things around. There, had a good conversation with Scott Demore, uh, and uh, you know decided that uh, you know maybe this was uh, a place where I could come in and, and lend a hand uh, and really help them uh, start to rebuild Impact Wrestling uh, back to uh, some prominence. Uh, hey, uh, this is Vijay from Sports Kira in India. Um, my question is: uh, This time, after your return, did you consciously decide to return as a heavyweight, as compared to say an X division or a cruiserweight wrestler after your run in uh, Two or Five Live? Thank you. Uh, I decided to return as a world class wrestler, and that's why I've you know that's why I've made sure that people understand this is the Impact World Championship. Uh, you know, for me, weight divisions in wrestling is a little silly because we never adhere to them. We never use them, right? Um, and there's also this perception that if you're, you know, if you're less than a heavyweight or if you're, you know, not 206 pounds, 
somehow uh, you can't be on top of the card or you can't be considered main event talent, and it's just foolish. If you look at other uh, if you look at other sports such as MMA or boxing, you know guys like Floyd Mayweather, guys like Conor McGregor, never been heavyweights a day in their life, yet they've you know been some of the biggest draws there are in their respective uh, sports. So I think it's important for wrestling to you know to also follow suit, and you know you don't need to be a heavyweight to be world class. You don't need to be a heavyweight to be in the main event or to be the guy who draws money. And uh, you know I'm hoping to change that perception. And you know right now I'm the Impact World Champion. There's no weight restriction. There's no weight requirements on there. If you're world class and you think you can beat me, uh, you know I'm I'm willing to put the, the title on the line. Uh, hi, Austin. This is uh, Marcus Green with Total Wrestling Man. First off, congratulations on your huge title win. Um, the last time, yeah, the last time you were uh, world champion, you talked about, you know, a potential boom period coming and how you want to be the leader in that. Do you still feel the same way um, in light of where the company is now? Yeah, you know, I, I felt, you know, back in the, you know, my first time I won the, you know, the, the championship, you know, there was a good buzz with the company. Uh, they obviously had some bigger, you know, more you know, world-renowned names with Hulk Hogan in the, in the fold, Jeff Hardy, things of that sort. But I felt that, you know, with things that had happened there kind of organically, that there was really a buzz with what was going on within the company that I thought, you know, for whatever reason, they failed to capitalize on. Uh, you know, fast forward now, the company's obviously in a, a much different situation, kind of a reboot, um, you know, which this company's had a few of them. So, it's, so people are skeptical. But... You know, what I, what I hope people understand is that for me to come back to this company, and I've been there through different regime changes, and I've had my trials and tribulations, for me to come back here now uh, should really single that, uh, be a signal that things are different. There's different thought processes, and there's different people at the helm, because I wouldn't be here otherwise. And uh, so I do take it seriously to be someone that can usher in some change, not just from an in-ring standpoint, but from a philosophical standpoint of how they're going to do business, how they're going to treat talent. And, and really, you know, for me, allowing me to come in and still be an independent contractor. And I think that's really important. You know, the wrestling industry is changing right now. And, uh, you know, I think Impact is, is aware of that, and they want to be kind of on the cutting edge to kind of help usher maybe a new philosophy in how, how companies work with talent. Uh, hello, Austin. My name is Stephanie from Stitcher Magazine in UK. Um, I wanted to ask you, who are the wrestlers you are looking forward to competing with in, on Impact? And um, thank you very much. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, you know what? Uh, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of uh, competitors in Impact right now that you know I haven't had the opportunity to get in the ring with. You know, and um, you know, I mean, just off the top of my head, I mean, obviously, you know, my, my match with Eli Drake, if you even want to call it that, was so short. Um, you know, I'd, I'd sure love to get back in there with him again and make sure that, you know, we have a proper match so that he has no excuses and and uh, and I can feel like I really earned this championship. Uh, you have guys like Johnny Impact, who's obviously well-traveled, but we've never been in the ring together. Uh, Alberto Del Rio, uh, along the same lines, a guy who's kind of been everywhere, uh, and but yet we've never had the opportunity to step in the ring. Uh, you know, and there's some younger guys, too, uh, you know, that, that, that are making their way up that, you know, I kind of have my eye on that, uh, you know, uh, eventually, you know, maybe get the opportunity to step in the ring with those two. Hi, Austin. This is James from Wrestling Epicenter. It's a pleasure to talk to you, and welcome back, by the way. Thanks, James. Uh, my first question is going to be, you guys, uh, yourself, and, and several others departed, went to WWE with, there was a whole class, almost like a new Radicals kind of vibe. Now that you're backstage at Impact Wrestling, how has it changed, and can you feel that there is a new revival in the mix? Yeah, there's just a different energy. Uh, you know, I, I think, and again, I, I think I touched on this earlier, I know that this company has been through some different changes over the years, but for me it was important that, um, you know, some of the founding philosophies of how the, of how the company did business uh, are no longer there. And that, and that was important that when I talked with Scott and I talked with Don, talked with Sanjay, you know, that, you know, we're really in line with how they want to go about rebuilding this um, and really changing philosophies on how the company has relationships with talent. You've got to understand, this is a different day in wrestling. Um, you don't need a professional wrestling company's platform to necessarily 
uh, get yourself over. We all have our social mediums. We all have our social platforms, whether it's, you know, with our, our Twitters, our Facebook, our YouTube channels. I mean, people can build their own brands uh, outside of any one certain company. And also with companies, they don't necessarily need to have network television to get their product out there. You know, I'm really fortunate now, right, to be working with a number of different companies who all have their own streaming service or they put their stuff up on the YouTube channel so that their content's out there. And uh, so I think really... We're, we're looking at this new this new age of professional wrestling where it can really be a mutual, where it can truly be a mutually beneficial relationship without all the restrictions and stuff that maybe we had in, in the old in the old philosophy and the old mindset. So when I go there, I see that that you have a bunch of guys who see this opportunity to use the Impact Wrestling brand to, to raise their platform, and vice versa. The Impact can use guys like myself to help to help raise uh, and bring some some notoriety to their company. So. Uh, yeah, I think. Listen, there, there's a long road ahead. There's there's a lot there's a lot of work to do, and, and nobody is uh, nobody is uh, delusional to that. But I think that the right guys have the right philosophy, and I feel that when you're back there, you see a lot of hungry guys who maybe haven't had an opportunity to step on a national stage, an international stage, and uh, and everyone's going out there and trying to kind of make their mark. So, um, yeah, you know, at this last, last set of TV tapings, there was definitely I felt again while there's going to be growing pains, there was definitely a positive energy and a lot of excitement about what's going on and, and what the future holds. Hey Austin, it's Mike Johnson from PW Insider. How are you, sir? What's up, Mike? How you doing? Good to hear you. Doing good. So, uh, obviously coming back into the company in a major role like this, there's a lot of pressure on you, um, and the company's in a position where a lot needs to be done to try and rebuild it. Um, this is a unique opportunity for you in that you're going to be one of the central figures going forward here. Um, what sort of pressure did you feel walking out that night knowing that as this company moves forward, they're kind of putting you in the middle of, of the chess game as one of the players that they're going to start to build around? Um, you know, it's a good point. I don't know. I don't know that I felt pressure so much. You know, I, I think if anything, um, you know, it kind of, it, it continued to motivate me, you know, and re reinvigorate me, um, you know, coming off of where I was, where, where I didn't really have a lot of the creative freedoms. I didn't have a lot of the input. I didn't really get to be myself to have a company like this really, uh, you know, entrust in me and say, Hey, we want, we want Austin Aries for Austin Aries. We believe in what you do. We can believe, we believe in how you want to do business and, uh, and to be a central figure to help, you know, try to, to try to help this company turn things around. I take a lot of pride in that, and, and uh, I'm, I'm going to go out there and, and, work, and work my ass off to try to deliver. Um, you know, so but you know, I've always felt that you know I, I, I probably work better under pressure. So you know, I think for me it was just going out there and you know not really knowing exactly again. You know, the the impact zone can be a, an, an interesting an interesting barometer. Uh, you know, of fans. So you didn't. I, I wasn't sure exactly how I'd be received. Um, you know, but the reception was good. I know maybe it didn't sound that way on on, on the television show. Uh, you know, when you're when you're doing some uh, post commentary, sometimes it, you can kind of lose the feel of, of the energy that was in that place. But there was a lot of energy in there. Uh, I was I was happy to welcome back with op open arms, and uh, and also just happy to to have a team of guys who who believe in what I can bring to the table, and are yeah kind of put me in a position to to help this company uh, really turn turn things around. So uh, you know, I'm excited and, and, and grateful for the opportunity. Hello, Austin. David Dunn from the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer. Um, my question to you pertains to your schedule in wrestling all around the world. You know, I know you hold a number of championships. You've got the Defiant Championship in the UK, uh, championships in Australia. Uh, so you're probably pretty well placed to answer this in terms of what do you think is the state of the professional wrestling business in general in 2018 on a worldwide scale? Uh, it's as good as I've ever seen it. You know, I've been doing this 17 years, and, and for a lot of that, I was making my name uh, on the independent scene. So, you know, when I when I was free and clear to go start taking bookings, um, I was really surprised and really happy and excited to see just how strong and how vibrant the pro wrestling scene is across the globe. And again, I attest that a lot to, you know, social media and the Internet, which is just really, you know, shrunken everything globally. To where again I'm going to be going to New Zealand here in, in, in the next month. I've been, you know, yeah, the World Series wrestling champion. So I'm, I'm going to be returning to Australia. Just went to Peru. I'm going to be going to Chile. 
You know, I've, I've had I've had offers to go a bunch of places. I haven't been able to fit my schedule yet. So it shows me that there's a market there. There's a fan base there that want to see an alternative to what they've been given, and they want to see pro wrestlers pro wrestling. And uh, you know, I think that there's a lot of guys who are recognizing that and say this is really maybe the first time where you know, as an independent wrestler, you can go out and make a great living. You know, you can make a living before, and you can maybe make a good living, but you can go make a great living now traveling the world, and there's enough quality promotions who are trying to do things the right way that give guys the opportunity to go out and do that. And, uh, you know, for someone like myself, you know, who values uh, a certain sense of freedom, who values uh, the artistic expression I get to, I get to have, um, you know, I couldn't be happy right now with, with the, the, the landscape of professional wrestling and being someone who's trying to bridge a lot of those places together because I think, again, companies are seeing if they work together um, that there's a, there's a pretty big pie that can be baked and everybody can have a nice slice instead of fighting over the crumbs, which is kind of the old philosophy of what wrestling's been held back with for, for a number of years. Austin, Jim Barcelona with MiamiHerald.com. Was hey, wondering, you mentioned about freedom and creativity. I was wondering what was your time like then in WWE and what did you learn or take from your experiences there? Uh, you know, it, was, it was a great experience and I'll always be grateful for the opportunity. Uh, and obviously, you know, coming on the other side of it's put me in a, in, in a great position. Uh, you know, definitely raised my notoriety and, uh, and I did learn a lot of things there. But, you know, that's a very corporate structure and with that comes a lot of layers and, and you know, they have a certain way to do things. and. And I'm certainly not going to argue with it because they're very successful in what they do. Um, but, you know, just like anything else, you know, I was using the analogy, you know, McDonald's sold a billion hamburgers and they're worldwide and there's not a country you, you can go to on the globe where you don't see the imprint of McDonald's. Um, but, you know, there's other places to eat food and, there's, and, and not everybody who likes McDonald's, even though that they're the most popular and they're the biggest, doesn't necessarily mean they're the best. And that comes down to personal preference. And, um, you know, so for me, uh, you know, going there uh, was an opportunity to see how things are done uh, at that scale uh, with their philosophy, and I, I definitely learned from it. I definitely benefit from, benefit from it. And uh, if the situation was right, you know, I'd entertain the opportunity to go back. But right now, uh, you know, I'm really enjoying my, you know, my life right now with, you know, having the freedoms to be able to go and do these things. And, you know, it's funny because you know, this country especially, we talk about freedom, we talk about independence, which is like one of the big you know, big thing that this country is is founded on. And yet, uh, somewhere along the way with professional wrestling, if you're an indie wrestler, that has this negative connotation, like you're not quite good enough or you're not, you're not quite in the big leagues. Um, but yet, I would think if you ask anybody who has a nine to five job or is beholden to the man, if they could have more independence in their life, uh, they would surely take it and they'd probably give up a lot of things to have that. So, you know, to have some independence, to be able to kind of make my own schedule to you know, stay a couple of extra days in Peru and go hike Machu Picchu, uh, you know, to, to stay a few extra days in Australia and in New Zealand to actually enjoy the experience. You know, those things are important to me. And right now the professional wrestling scene is providing that, and it's a great thing. You may now ask your question. Hey, Mr. Aries, this is uh, Big Ray for OneWrestling.com. Uh, it's great to have you back in Impact. I'm sure we're all excited for the future. Uh, with Austin Aries here in Impact. Now, speaking about the future, I don't know if you're uh, uh, able to talk about this, but I I'll just ask, Mr. Aries, are you signed to a long-term deal with Impact Wrestling? And if so, uh, again, moving forward, what's the future hold for Austin Aries? Are you looking to stay within, you know, within the the confines of the ring, or do you look to have more of a, con uh, let's say, creative role moving forward in the future, sir? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, two parts. Um, so no, I'm not under any type of long-term contract with Impact Wrestling. Uh, we came to an agreement for a certain number of dates that would run a certain uh, length of time. Um, but there's really no restrictions on me, which was the beautiful thing of, of this uh, of this opportunity. They wanted me to keep doing what I'm doing, which is basically traveling around. And uh, I, I, I say it tongue in cheek, but the belt collector, right? I'm going around to all these promotions and trying to collect titles. Um, and, and so that for me was the opportunity that was appealing to me. I wasn't coming in and being put with restrictions or we're going to, we're going to own this or we're going to take a cut of this. It was, Hey, we like what you're doing. We like the philosophy of what you're doing. And we'd like to work together, uh, as in a mutually beneficial partnership. 
uh, that, that, that allows us to both, you know, hopefully come out ahead. And um, so, you know, the door is obviously open for me to, to continue with Impact Wrestling. And, uh, and, I, and I would love if things, you know, unraveled in a way to where it made it a, a no-brainer for me to continue this relationship moving forward for the next year, the next two years, whatever it may be. Um, but obviously there's a lot of opportunity out there. And, um, you know, it's important for me to keep my flexibility and, and to keep those options and, and not really have those restrictions. So, um, you know, and as far as the second part, uh, you know what, I, 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 I'm feeling good right now. Uh, you know, I'm about to hit 40. Uh, but I think, I think I have, I think I have, uh, you know, again, I was talking with, uh, Diamond Dallas Page and I was hanging out with him in Atlanta not that long ago. And he said, bro, my career didn't even take off till I was 40, you know? So when I started thinking about that, I said, Hey, you know, I've done a lot of, uh, I've been blessed to do a lot of great things in the, in the industry so far, but you know, I think that I've got another, uh, another good length of time in me as an in-ring competitor. Um, and, and I'm lucky enough that a lot of these places I'm working um, they do respect my and value my opinions when it comes to the creative aspect, not just for myself, but, but as a whole. So I'm kind of getting the best of both worlds in that way. And, uh, you know, down the line, once my in-ring days are behind me, um, you know, if I want to stay within the industry, I think there's some facets that would definitely be appealing, whether that's in a creative aspect or, or back behind the commentary table. Hi, Austin. This is Rory from Team Venom Media. Um, firstly, congratulations on your title win. Um, Thank you. What I wanted to, to ask was, um, we've recently seen the Global Wrestling Network for, for Impact Wrestling get launched on the Xbox One in the UK, which has uh, opened up a, a new avenue for viewers to see Impact. Um, what highlights of your career would you recommend people to pick up on from there? Oh, man. Um you know, I think, uh, you know, off the top of my head, um, you know, I think even going back, going back to my first stint there, the paparazzi production, uh, the paparazzi, uh, challenge is <clears throat> go back and watch those from time to time. And those are just a bunch of guys going out there and, and having some fun doing some silly stuff. Um, the, uh, obviously that wasn't me. That was Austin star, but, uh, but then, you know, fast forward, obviously, um, you know, I've had a lot of success in the X Division. There have been a lot of exciting matches in there. I think that, you know, my whole lead up to uh, the Option C and then, you know, winning the World Championship against Bobby Roode, uh, you know, I, there was a lot of great matches mixed in there with, with Bully Ray and then going on with, you know, the, the feud with Jeff Hardy. And then and then even the tag team stuff I did with, you know, with Bobby Roode is the Dirty Heels. Uh, you know, there's a lot of fun moments in there, too. So, um you know, and, and it's a great, again, it's a great opportunity uh, for, for fans to go back and, and if you're new to Impact Wrestling, to kind of go back and see some of the history and the lineage of the people who have been, uh, you know, been there uh, throughout the history and uh, kind of get yourself familiar. And again, just another way for people to, uh, to enjoy the content. And again, I think more and more companies are going that direction where, you know, they have their streaming service that people can, you know, subscribe to and, and really get all the different content that they want. So it's, it's a really cool time to be a wrestling fan. There's, there's so much out there to be explored. Hi, Austin. This is Nick Hausman from uh, WrestleZone.com. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat today. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, my question is, uh, you know, obviously you've been out now uh, on the road all over the world, Peru, Australia. Um, you've obviously worked with a lot of great talent. Is there anyone out there right now that you are saying to Impact Management, we need to go after this this individual? I think I could have a great match with them, and I think they'd be good for our locker room. Hmm. Interesting question. Um, well, you know what? Um, not, uh, in this case, it falls in line of talent. My friend Johnny LaQuasto, who I met back, in uh, championship wrestling from Hollywood a number of years ago, is a is a, is a really funny comedian, but he's also a really good uh, commentator and announcer. And I know that you know, as they were trying to you know maybe think about bringing some guys in in that role, that's definitely a name I put out there. Um, you know, a lot some of the guys that I've I mixed it up, like a guy like Marty Skrull, have, have some contractual obligations. A guy like Matt Riddle that I just I uh, got the chance to wrestle not that long ago, again have some contractual obligations that maybe would prohibit them from coming to Impact Wrestling. Um, there's another guy, Marcus Burke, who uh, maybe he's got, I got a soft spot for him because he's a fellow vegan, but um, you know, i uh, gotten to know him a little bit, and I think he's also a guy who, who would benefit from uh, having the opportunity to step on a more international scene and, and, and has a lot to offer. So 
there's a lot. There's, there, I mean, there's there's so much talent all over them, you know, uh, that, I've, that I've been able to step in the ring with, and uh, and that's kind of the exciting thing because right now, like, there's a whole new, there's kind of like a whole new generation of guys that, you know, while they make me feel a little old when they remind me that they watched me back. Uh, I loved your match with Samoa Joe in 2004. I remember I was watching it with my grade school friends, um, but it's cool to see uh, that. You know, I think the future wrestling's in good hands because there's a lot of passion, there's a lot of athleticism, and uh, and again, the landscape's changed, so there's a lot of opportunity for those guys. Uh, Ryan Bowman from the GorillaPosition.com. Austin, you're considered one of the most versatile wrestlers in the world. Uh, do you credit that with uh, how much you've traveled and how much do you borrow from the different international styles that you've seen? Uh, somewhat. I think also, you know, when I broke in, it was really important for me because I wasn't the biggest guy. Um, I never saw myself as a small guy, but I, I, I realized I wasn't the biggest guy, but I never wanted to be pigeonholed. You know, I just, oh, he's just a cruiserweight. Um, I wanted to pride myself on being somebody that really, you can put anywhere on the card and ask me to do anything, whether you want, you want to have a comedy match, a tag team match, or you need a main event feel that I can go out there and do that. And uh, I think that's been something that's helped me be successful because, you know, when you can, when you can have that versatility, there's always a spot for you or there should always be a spot for you somewhere on the card. Um, you know, there's never a reason that people shouldn't uh, be able to find something for you creatively uh, when you can, when you can have that type of versatility. So, you know, I think that that's something that I always try to, you know, when I'm doing seminars and things like that, I always try to tell, tell a lot of the younger guys is, the more multifaceted you can be, not just in styles of wrestling, but also understanding that there's different ways to entertain the audience every night. And it's not always with the five-star match. You know, some nights that's not what your job is. And, uh, and again, you can't necessarily have a card that's just all five-star matches. You need to have variety. And uh, you need to give the, 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 the audience a little a bit of different things. So, um, yeah, it's something I've always kind of prided myself on. And I think it's, it's definitely lended itself well to me over the years. Yes, this is Hannibal from the HannibalTV.com. Uh, there were some reports that uh, prior to your departure with WWE, there were some backstage issues with the writing staff. Uh, is there any truth to that? Some reports, huh, Hannibal? Hmm. Yeah. Who, who are those reports from? Who are the sources of those reports? Uh, apparently the Wrestling Observer. Hmm. <clears throat> The Wrestling Observer, and then who? And, and but who? But who actually said that? I'm no, reading was, that. No, there was no. There was, there was. There was no name. There was no name source to those reports. But here, well, here's here's an interesting thing with that. I'll bet you the writers probably didn't like working with me very much because understand that in that in that environment, when when I'm given something that the writers hand me, if I have any things that I think should be adjusted or maybe things that I wouldn't personally say. Um, as, as someone who's been doing this for 17 years and as a writer, it's not easy for us to just go and change those things, but they then have to go march back into the office and have those things changed for them. So that the process is a little tedious and it really, to me, takes a lot of the, the artistic and creative freedoms away from the wrestlers. Uh, I don't know any writer that would know my voice better than myself. I've been doing this a long time. Um, so, you know, I'll say this. If there's any writers who have any issues with me in WWE, they certainly never expressed that to me. Uh, it was something that was never brought to my attention. So I can't, so I can't really uh, speak on, on, you know, anonymous reports. But I will say the process in and of itself is tedious. And for a bunch of guys who are, you know, sometimes afraid for their jobs or scared of their own shadows, to have to repeatedly march into the, the, the you know the chairman's office to uh, ask if a, if if a line could be changed or some verbiage could be uh, you know switched around, I'm um, I'm sure for them maybe some of them looked at that as kind of a pain in the ass, but um, you know outside of that, um, if that was the, if that wasn't the case, uh, that was never brought to my attention. So uh, I guess that's all speculation and hearsay. Hi, Austin. This is Raj Giri with Wrestling Inc. How are you? Doing good. How's everything, man? 
everything's good. Um, I wanted to ask you about the the promo you gave at uh, House of Hardcore. I thought it was a a great promo about looking within yourself and 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 taking personal responsibility. I just wanted to know how things have changed for you personally um, now since your last run with uh, Impact Wrestling. Well, first of all, thank you because uh, there are some people who did appreciate that promo. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I, I thought for, with, with that with that promo, I thought that there was a people were expecting me to go out there and to start, you know, launching launching napalm and burning bridges and. And it's easy to do, right? It's easy to always point the finger at other people and blame them. But I wanted to go out there and do something that people weren't expecting. And I want to take personal accountability. You know, because again, uh, you know, the only thing that we can truly change is ourselves. The only thing that we can look at in situations that maybe don't work out the way we'd like them to work out is what did I do to contribute to that? Uh, I, can't, I can't change all the other factors in play other than the factors that I bring to the table. And, um, you know, for for any backlash that I did get from from certain people, uh, or, you know, or certain you know contingencies on the internet, I got a lot of messages uh, and, and a lot of comments from fans who really appreciated someone kind of stepping out and doing that, and also made them feel like someone understood some of the things that they struggle with. So, um, you know, maybe it went a little long. I don't think I needed 13 minutes to maybe uh, to, to, to do all that, but um, uh, you know, I thought it was uh, I thought it was something that again. Nobody else's promo was uh, transcripted the following day except mine. So I just said it's something like because people were talking about it, whether they liked it or they hated it. Um, but yeah, you know, from my first one, you know, from my first one, Impact. I, I don't know. I don't know that I've, that I've changed a whole lot, other than uh, trying to be more mindful of how I handle situations. You know, my convictions are my convictions. My philosophies on how you treat people, how you go about business, haven't really changed. Um, but now as I come back, you know, this, the third time or whatever that I've come back or fourth time, uh, some of the people in positions of power have changed and, 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 and the way that they want to go about business, the way they want to treat people, you know, again, just looking somebody in the eye and being honest with them. That's not an easy thing to find in this industry and it hasn't been for a long time. And I never understood why with guys who are in such positions of power would be so afraid to look somebody in the face and just, and just tell them, tell it to them straight. You know, and uh, there's a lot of, you know, so the whole glad handing and smiling and stabbing somebody in the back or waiting until their back's turned to kind of bury them, I've never understood that philosophy. And uh, unfortunately, when you when you look in somebody's eyes and, you, and you're and you honest with them, you know, and you tell them some things that maybe they don't want to hear, it doesn't always make you the most popular person, you know. But luckily for me now, I'm in a position where I don't have to win popularity contests to be successful. Um, you know, I can, I can rely on my skill, my passion, and my philosophies on, on wrestling and uh, and uh, don't have to worry about winning the popularity contest. So, um, you know, I try to be a little more. Uh, I try to handle things a little more uh, diplomatically at times. I try to make sure that I'm not letting my emotion get the best of me. But you know, the things that I still uh, hold true haven't really changed much from really the, the beginning of my career. Uh, hey, uh, Riju from Sports Kid again. My question is, what did you think of the former champion Eli Drake, and uh, did you keep up with the product when uh, during your time away from Impact Wrestling? Thank you. What did I think of Eli, Eli Drake's uh, promo? Um, uh, when I was amused, you know, the, the, the greatest dresser that ever lived, uh, the greatest uh, the, the greatest friend that ever lived, the greatest champion that ever lived. Um, you know, I think Eli's definitely a charismatic guy. Uh, he, he definitely he definitely has the gift to gab, and I think sometimes, you know, I think people overlook that he's actually a pretty good in-ring wrestler. He's very athletic. He's got to him. He's in great shape. I think sometimes his his character almost overshadows that, where people don't give him the credit for that. Um, as far as following the product, uh, you know what? I try to follow wrestling as much as I need to for someone who does it for a living, um, but I'm not a fanatical anymore. You know, I think somewhere along the line, uh, maybe I, I outgrew being a, a, a diehard fan of professional wrestling. I think a lot of it, to be quite honest, isn't really catered to somebody my age with my interests. You know, I think, uh, you know, a, a lot of the products geared more towards kids. I mean, that's when I started falling, that's when I fell in love with wrestling when I was four years old. Um, so, but I do try to keep up to make sure I'm educated, make sure that, you know, again, as somebody does this for a profession, that uh, I'm keeping myself in the loop with the talent and what's going on with different companies so that I'm always educated.
If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. Forest alone, MyMural.com again. You've seen an impact wrestling where American top team has gotten involved. You see in WWE where Ronda Rousey is now stepping up and getting involved there. What are your thoughts when someone that's not per se in wrestling at the time is coming into the company and being put in the specific spots like that? Your thoughts on that area of the business? Um, I mean, listen, you can go back and Jesse Ventura said it that back when he went to go do Predator, that, you know, the best way to make it big in the wrestling industry is go make it big in any other industry. And it's always been that way. You know, um, do I necessarily agree with that? Yes and no. Uh, you know, again, this is about maybe bringing a note and, and bringing more mainstream to the to your product. Then it would make sense to go out and bring some of these people into the fold. Um, but I think there has always been this handicap where certain companies treat people who don't like wrestling a lot better than they treat the people who do like wrestling. Because, again, if they tell someone who has passion for wrestling, now nah, we're not interested in you, now nah, uh, we don't have anything for you, they know that person will still be there two, three, four years down the road because this is what they love to do. If they tell that football player, their ex-football player, that they're not interested in them, that guy might disappear. They may never see him again. So they'll give that guy the contract, you know, but, but the other guy, they know will keep grinding and, and be there if and when they decide they want him. So, uh, you know, I think sometimes for a lot of, you know, men and women, I, I, there's been this idea that, and this, you know, I, I've heard it from different people over the years where it's, you almost, you almost get it used against you because you love wrestling so much because they know that they can kind of kick sand in your face and you'll take it because this is what you love to do. But if you go do that to some swimsuit model, she'll, she'll go find another career. So I think that there's a balance there. I think that you need to invest in the right people, uh, you know, within the company. And I think that there's been some missteps over the years by all the companies where they invest in the wrong people while, while, while not giving the, the credit to the people who have been there to help build them. And uh, what that does sometimes is creates a, a bit of a negative environment in the back where people don't feel like they're being rewarded for loving the, the industry, respecting the industry, and working hard in the industry when they see people who don't have those things just immediately leapfrog them and, and, and be treated uh, completely differently. You may now ask your question. Hey, Mr. Aries, it's Big Ray for OneWrestling.com again. Uh, last week we had Big on... Ray. What's up, man? Last week we had on Braxton Sutter and Ali, and that was a really fun interview. And, you know, Ali's a big proponent of being a vegan, and, and you you yourself, mm -hmm. from what we know, uh, you're you're quite the vegan, and you're you're in phenomenal shape. I just wanted to know, you know, just for fun, give us some some great uh, maybe uh, health tips regarding being a vegan, and, and, and what, do, what are some of your favorite meals moving forward and, and just tell us about that vegan lifestyle uh well you know i think and even if you're not vegan if you don't want to go because again I, I like using the term plant-based diet because i feel like vegan is kind of an all or nothing proposition right you're either vegan or you're not but everybody can eat more of a plant-based diet you know there's no excuses to not do that i think the biggest thing for me is just food education i think people are so unaware of how bad most of the things are that are made the the, the easiest and, and most readily available to them um, you know, and, and realize that animal products are almost in everything we consume. Uh, you know, I asked some people who say to me, you know, veganism is so extreme. Um, you know, you never eat any, you never eat any dairy, you never eat any eggs, you never eat any meat. Like that's so extreme. And I, I counter that with asking them when's the last meal they had that didn't have one of those things in it. And a lot of times they can't remember the last time they had a meal that didn't have meat, dairy, or eggs attached to it. So we're kind of indoctrinated in this different mindset that every meal has to have some type of animal product in it. And really, when you start following the money, you realize that's that's just a philosophy that's been taught to us by big corporations who control all these things. And when you look at all the, the diseases and the ailments and obesity and diabetes and cancer and all these things we can't seem to find the cure for, we don't want to talk about food. And there's a lot of money being spent to not talk about food. There's a lot of money being spent, so again, now we can't even go and film to see what's happening inside these slaughterhouses, how these animals have been treated and killed. And they're, and they're spending, you know, again, huge amounts of money to keep it secret. Uh, when, when companies spend a lot of money to keep things secret, you should question why that is. So again, as a consumer, we have the ultimate responsibility. We have the ultimate vote with our checkbook of what we will and will not find acceptable to, to, to put in our bodies. And I think now 
the trend is really picking up, and there's more and more athletes and entertainers like Allie, like myself, uh, you know, uh, football players, basketball players that are starting to adopt more of a plant-based diet or 100% plant-based. And the corporations are now taking notice because, again, the milk industry is taking a huge hit financially. The egg industry is taking a huge hit financially. And now they're scrambling to figure out how they can still get their piece of the pie. And that's why they're buying up some of these more plant-based companies because that's where the trend's going. Because, again, I don't need to, I don't need to like, preach anybody to go vegan. I don't, I don't push anybody to go vegan. I do, uh, I do challenge them to open up their mindset and to try it because, again, I feel like when they see the results, when they, when they start feeling better, when they start losing weight, when they start getting off their pharmaceuticals, uh, that's enough for them to keep going, going that way. So, again, we have a healthcare system that doesn't want healthy people. They want sick people because healthy people, uh, you know, you, it, once somebody's healthy, you don't need your pharmaceuticals anymore. They lost the customer. So you have a food system that keeps people sick. Uh, and which then sends them over their healthcare system, which just treats you with different pharmaceuticals. So, uh, again, the, the onus is on the consumer to, to educate themselves. And, again, the more of a plant-based diet you eat, uh, really the better you're going to feel, the better it is for the animals, and the better it is for the environment. Hey, Austin, it's Graham Matthews from Henroute.com again. Um, on the same show that you won the TNA or the Impact World Championship, rather, just last week, just so happened to be the same show that they returned to the four-sided ring. So what's it like working back in a four-sided ring compared to the six-sided ring during your last tenure with the company? And also, any plans to write a second book after the success of Food Fight? Hmm. Well, you know, uh, some reports would say that, you know, I demanded that the four-sided ring was brought back before I would come back to the company. And those reports also probably stated I demanded to, to uh, ha have the opportunity to be the world champion or I wouldn't come back. Um, but in all seriousness, I think, you know, I think Don and, and, and Scott have touched on it, that really the decision for them came down to what, what had the most support of, of the people who actually had to go in the ring and, uh, and, and work. And I think universally, if you talk to most of the talent, um, you know, the fourth side of the ring is where it's at. Uh, it's, it's what we've all, it's what we're all accustomed to. And, uh, and I think, again, you know, when I think of pro wrestling, I think of a, I think of a squared circle. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, for me, um, you know, it was, it was a great, it, it was great to come back and know that they're going to, you know, switch back to the four sided ring. Um, you know, again, there's some other factors. Again, when you start talking about the angles of the ropes, the guy who comes off the top rope, I'm used to a 90 degree angle. When you go to a six sided ring, that becomes more obtuse. It changes some things. It changes it changes the, the you know just uh, you know the the, the the extra size can create some issues where your cameras are where where you're running spots I mean there's a lot of different factors that people don't think about other than the aesthetics of it so you know I applaud Don and Scott and the team to really listen to the talent and say well this is a no-brainer if this is where they feel more comfortable this is where they feel more safe then that's what we're gonna do and uh, so that so that's uh, you know, kudos to them for that. And uh, as far as writing a second book, uh, yeah, you know, I, I think down the road we could have something that's more along the lines. Of, a lot of people have been asking me to have, you know, are the recipes in the book, which there aren't really a lot of recipes in the book. So maybe something that's more geared just towards that and more of a recipe book could be something that down the line I would look into. Hi, Austin. This is Raj Geary with WrestlingInc.com again. Uh, I just wanted to uh, get your thoughts on the current uh, status of the X Division, given all the success you've had there, and where you can kind of see that evolving and going. Yeah, that's a good question, and, and I've always, I've always been a little uh, torn on the X Division. Obviously, I, I'm very, I was very prominent in the X Division. Uh, you know, I, I owe a lot of my later success through what I was able to do with the X Division. Obviously, the Option C idea. Um, but for me, it's always, I've always struggled with what is the X division? What's the definition of it? You know, and I think that a lot of people have had that. I remember having that discussion with Eric Bischoff back when, you know, when he was part of the, part of the team and, and they wanted to kind of bring in a weight, a weight limit, you know, which I understand because what is the definition of X, you know, the, the style of wrestling has changed so much. Well, who is an X division anymore? You know, I mean, you got guys like Keith Lee is, you know, 300 some pounds, was he X Division? Samoa Joe back in the day, 280 pounds Samoan. He's X Division. So for me, the struggle's always been is what is the X Division? And then, and then the other, second part is if you're going to implement some type of weight restriction or weight limit, uh, I think, you know, at one time they did like 215. 
Well, if that's the case, then you need to do it. Then anybody who's not 215 is in the X Division. And then all of a sudden you're looking and you're going, wow, well, AJ Styles is in the X Division. Jeff Hardy's in the X Division. You know, like, now, now your top guys would be in the X Division. You know, I think that, again, along the lines of, of you know, with the 205 Live thing, you know, there's, there's some guys who aren't 205 pounds who are considered two biggest stars to be put in 205 Live. Well, what does that say about your what, what you think of the division? If you're going to use weight limits and weight restrictions, then use it. When's the last time anybody's seen a weigh-in in a pro wrestling show? Right? We, we haven't. So, so we have these weight restrictions, but we don't use them. Or in the case of the X Division, there's really no definition of what it is other than it's this stylistic type of wrestling, which maybe back in, in its inception made a lot of sense. But now fast forward 15 years later, uh, that's the, pr the prominent style that most guys work. So for me, that's always been the struggle with the X Division is, is, is defining it and, and what it is. Is it just a secondary title? Uh, are there weight limits? Are there not weight limits? So I think that's something that, you know, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure Scott and Don and the team, Sanjay, you know, uh, Chris have, have talked about. And, and um, you know, there's a lot of lineage, a lot of history with the X Division. And obviously it's not something that you want, you want to go away, but kind of figuring out exactly what it is in this, day, in this current state, in this day and age, I think is important. Austin, I know your time is limited today. We got one more question for you. Is that okay? That works. Uh, this is Stephanie again for Stiocha Magazine. So I'm a French working for British media and I can't help but ask you, um, how do you feel to wrestle in UK, uh, the difference with the American um, audience? Um, well, one, the experience of wrestling in England and the fans, of course. And uh, thank you again. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, you know, I've always enjoyed going over to the UK. I think that, again, they have some of the, the most passionate wrestling fans in the world. Uh, I know that over the years, um, you know, the UK has been a great market for impact wrestling. You know, some of, some of the biggest shows of the year have taken place over there. I know it's, uh, I know it's something uh, that's been talked about that the company would like to do again in the future, uh, very near future, to get back over to the UK because, again, the fan base over there is so strong. And... Um, you know, it's been cool for me to go over there and work with companies such as Defiant and uh, IPW UK and, um, and be somewhat of a bridge to help some of these companies start working together uh, to do some things creatively that's interesting for the fans and, uh, and also, you know, some that, that helps both companies, uh, you know, in their, in their business. So, um, you know, there, there, there's uh, right now it's, you know, in the UK, it's probably about as, as strong of a scene as I've seen it in quite some time as far as the talent level. The number of companies that are, are, are being successfully run and profitable. And uh, so, yeah, it, it's, it's a great thing. And you're seeing a lot, a, lot, a lot more of the U.K. talent make their way over to the States and, uh, and really make a name for themselves. All righty, Austin, I appreciate it very much. Thank you uh, for everything. Very insightful media teleconference. Uh, the next uh, few weeks certainly will be interesting, building up to redemption on April 22nd. Uh, give us a final thought. All right, well, uh, I appreciate everybody's time. Uh, I'm sure there's some good little s snippets in there. Everybody can uh, cut and paste and and give some good uh, shocking headlines tomorrow. And uh, and hopefully uh, also th there was some uh, you know some good information beyond that too. Uh, so uh, I appreciate everybody's time. I'm excited for you know not not only the future of Impact Wrestling but just professional wrestling as a whole. And uh, you know I think there's a lot of people that would that would agree with me that you know. Wrestling is in a very unique time right now, you know, and obviously the media plays a huge part in that. And uh, you know, for me, we can always we can always uh, we can always sift through things and find the negatives. We can always nitpick things, uh, but I think right now, you know, especially with wrestling media, the more that we can accentuate the positives uh, and and really keep putting that energy out there, I think that's that's a plus for everybody. So, you know, this this day and age of of where uh, you know. I can't turn the news on without seeing negative ne negativity. I, I, I just tune it out. So I, I encourage all the wrestling media and all your different facets, um, you know, champion the things that you love as, as opposed to, uh, uh, you know, shine the light on the things that you that you hate. And uh, and I'm going to try to do the same in my personal life and professional life as well. All righty, Austin, thank you very much. Media, thank you guys very much. We will talk to you next week. All right. Thanks, Ross.